Hey there, guys. Pinobi here bringing you the One Piece manga chapter review. This is chapter 631, uh, Giancorde Plaza. Um, I meant to do this yesterday, but I ended up going to some live streams, hanging out with friends, working on other videos, so I didn't quite get it up, but I am doing it today, so no harm, no foul. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the chapter yesterday. Of course, if you haven't had a chance to read it, read it I will leave a link in the description, as always, so that you can follow along or just get your own opinions and formulate those. Maybe you want to read the chapter before reading the review. That would, of course, make sense. And see if we notice some of the same things. So, yeah, the cover story is going to be Volume 16, Twin Capes, showing Crocus with some unidentified person whose back is turned to us. They kind of have long hair. It makes me think that they're perhaps an older person, especially because they're hanging out with Crocus. They appear to be swapping stories. A common theory now... Well, I believe it to be common, just because it seems like an obvious idea to me, is that that person could be Yorky. Yorky was captain of the Rumbar Pirates. He had a bit of a relation with Crocus and the fact that he asked him to watch Laboon for them and everything like that. So it kind of makes sense to me, and uh, that's just an idea. Although the mark was still intact on Laboon's, you know, body or whatever, that's kind of weird to me in the sense that it was just paint that Luffy painted on there. But in the sense of the actual story, it's supposed to signify that they are rivals. And the reason that's important is so that he doesn't knock, he doesn't like ram his head into the red line trying to go after Yorkie and the Rumbar Pirates and mess it up. So, yeah, it's basically Luffy's way of trying to save Laboon from killing himself by raping his head against the rocks. But regardless, we already know that, but it's still intact, which I thought was interesting considering it was just paint. But getting into the actual chapter. Um, Vanderdecken had shaved his head, which was an interesting way to start it off. I actually kind of liked this. Um, it, it seems to be some Japanese humor that maybe just goes over my head. Maybe it's not Japanese humor and I'm just, you know, dumb. But I didn't really understand it. I guess when, when you're rejected, you shave your head and that's supposedly funny or something that you just do. I don't know. I had never heard of that before. But regardless, I think that that was an important detail for Oda to put into the story because it covered up the plot hole of um, why Vanderdecken had not caught up with Luffy and gang yet. Because that's something that I was thinking about, and it's something I talked about in my last review, I believe. Because with Jim Bay sitting there telling them this long flashback story for a while, it seems, um, Vanderdecken easily could have caught up with them. So the fact that Oda explained, oh, Vanderdecken stop pursuing them and went to go do this, it, uh, you know, makes sense. So, going forward, we see that Neptune's army engages, like, Horty's gang, and they're pretty much beaten by just the sea creatures, although it is important to note that these sea creatures, uh, did take the steroids, the energy steroids, and speaking of the energy steroids, what do you guys think about them? Do you think it's a positive or negative force in the series? I kind of have mixed emotions. I think Oda's handling it pretty well. And I think if you just take it for what it is, it's not that bad. But the things that I don't like about it is it promotes this, like, power scale idea. Like, you know, they talk about Doriki and they say, oh, the average Marine is, like, 9 Doriki, or no, 10 Doriki, and, like, Spandam is 9 or something. Okay, that was fine, that wasn't a big deal. But then they go and they say, oh, the average Fishman is, like, 10 times stronger than a human, or something like that. And then now they're saying that the energy steroids multiply your strength by 10. Um, I'm just kind of trying to avoid this whole power scale I, this power scale thing, because I don't want people to get so caught up in the power scale that they forget that One Piece is a fighting series with a very circular, um, more chaotic dynamic to it, where it's almost like Pokemon, you know, it's got the, the, type, the type effectiveness. For example, I would, I'd put my money on saying that a Nell was definitely stronger than Luffy when they had their confrontation, but because Luffy had the sort of type advantage of being rubber versus electricity, he came out on top. And of course he had, you know, his ambition and Nakama and all that kind of stuff that goes into character development and motivations, etc., etc. But I just think it's important to note that things aren't so linear in One Piece. It's more of a circular dynamic when it comes to a power scale. But anyway, moving on, um, Horty looks bigger. Uh, more ripped. He has no eyebrows, which is kind of intimidating and a little bit of a weird change. I don't know if anybody else noticed that. And these are all effects from the energy steroids. He has white hair, you know, all that kind of stuff. I like that these energy steroids are giving a very visible effect to Horty. 
or Hody, I'm sorry. People have been saying Hordy with an R for a long time, but in this chapter, actually, Oda officially gave his spelling, and it's H-O-D-Y, Hody. So I need to get off that Hordy business. But Hody um, has a very visible change from the energy steroids. Last chapter, I believe it was last chapter, we saw him kind of mutating towards the end, and then now in this chapter we see the results. And um, I thought it was really interesting, but I do think that with the whole water shot, um, a few things irked me about that. It seemed like he kind of created water from his hand. Um, honestly, I should probably relook at the chapter myself in concerns to this like little bit, because were they underwater when this happened? Like, the sea beasts were there, and from my recollection, the sea beasts kind of hover, which makes me feel that they are underwater, because they're like swimming or floating or whatever. But then, you know, obviously the Straw Hats are going to rush to the plaza. I'm pretty sure it's not an underwater place, because it wouldn't really make sense for all the fighting to go down there properly. But either way, um, I'm a little confused on that front myself. I need to just go back and reread it and figure that out for myself. Maybe you guys can just leave a quick comment and tell me what you think about all that business. But it, it just, it irked me, or it seemed really weird, the way Horty kind of, like, created water from his hand. Maybe this ties in with the whole Fishman Karate thing. Because Jim Bay talked about how it's like mastery over the water and everyone has water in their bodies. Although, to be able to just take water from inside you and bring it out of you seems more like a superpower in a sense. Uh, a little bit more. It doesn't. It just doesn't really have the science behind it, the, the pseudoscience of the story behind it yet, but whatever. Um, also, he has spikes coming out of his wrist. I don't know if anyone else noticed that. Hell, for all I know, that those were already there beforehand, and I just didn't notice it. He also seemed to lose some weight. Like, he had a bit of a belly before, and now he's, you know, pretty ripped. And, uh, all that kind of stuff. And he's also holding a steroid pill, which I thought was interesting. Could he be just, like, looking at it, admiring the effects of it? Or being curious about it? Or does he have a bit more of understanding about it? Or is he contemplating taking more? I don't know. The whole white hair thing has some people considering the fact that the white hair could symbolize aging. Maybe the steroid pill makes you stronger, but it ages your body significantly or something like that, which of course is a viable opinion and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, the chapter seemed a little bit shorter to me because there was like three pages literally of him using this water shot move, albeit it was pretty cool. And then it, the chapter kind of wraps up with Fukuboshi and the princes showing up and basically talking down the pirates and saying that they're the naive ones, they're the, you know, bad ones, and that they just don't understand. They don't understand the sacrifice and the selfless, selflessness and all the motivations going behind what everybody on the island's doing, and they're the weak ones, etc., etc. And I thought it was pretty cool because it was fairly articulate, it was really short, it was all on one page, and on that same page we got to see all the princes, you know, bust out with their um, attacks, which were fairly cool. Um, I kind of feel like the princes are a little bit bland in character design, especially Fukuboshi when you just look at his character, but regardless, um, I thought that was pretty nice, pretty good. It kind of pushed the story into a more action, you know, heated sense, which I think is going to be really awesome when the Straw Hats, you know, bust in. And, you know, pretty much Hody, Hody just said, like, come at me, bro. He didn't even bother trying to fight back his insults or anything like that. He was just like, let's let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's just kind of my opinion on everything. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you guys thought. We saw Jim Bay and uh, Princess whatever hopping in towards the end, getting near the plaza. And it said at the bottom, if you watch the manga stream version, where's Luffy? And so we don't know exactly what the Straw Hats are doing, but I assume that's going to be covered next chapter, if not the chapter after that, if they decide to focus more on the Plaza action. But regardless, hopefully you guys enjoyed this chapter, hopefully you guys enjoyed this chapter review. Leave a like if you did, I really appreciate it, it helps the video get noticed, supports me, yada yada yada. Um, if you haven't checked out my Facebook page, you know, you want to see updates on my videos, go ahead and do that, link in the description, you know the drill. And yeah, got more videos coming in the future, catch you guys later.